Anyway, I uh, wanted to bring up a couple of reports, kind of almost conflicting reports from John Heyman in the New York Post. And I usually, the reports locally are usually always better than what you get nationally from reporters. It, it, as dialed in as they are, even the Jeff Passons of the world can't compete, generally with local reporting. So when John Heyman says that the odds of you, Darvish, coming back are 50-50 or maybe even better, Great, but what does he really know right. that we don't already know? We've kind of heard around the same thing. It Feels might like happen, it might not happen. It's just kind of a guess, but he did have that reporting yesterday. But in the same piece, he also said that the Padres in free agency this offseason could, they say the Padres love Blake Snell, could make a play for him this winter to bring him back as a free agent, assuming Blake Snell opts out and declines his $30 million player option, which... um Around baseball, they think he will unless he gets hurt in the next month and just wants to collect that $30 million. He's planning on hitting free agency again. And according to John Heyman, the Padres will be a team that will be a very active pursuer of Blake Snell this offseason, which to me is interesting. Not, not that I'm surprised that they like Blake Snell. I know the Padres and, and A.J. Preller like Blake Snell a lot. The question is, what's the direction this next offseason for the San Diego Padres? I know it's a little early to be talking about off-season moves. Way early. <laughs> it's way early. But you know, a, a, Blake Snell would be a, a pricey addition to the team. Yeah. After a year in which they scaled the payroll way back to get under the luxury tax level, is this report an indication that they might be willing to scale up again? You know, in this next off-season, knowing that they've got Dylan Cease for one more year, they've got Luis Arise. For one more year, they've got Michael King for one more year. Is next year potentially a year where the Padres look at their roster and go, okay, we can we can go over the luxury tax limit again like we yeah. did the previous couple of years because this would be a perfect year to go for it. And then we'll figure out where we are, who we want to offer contracts to, and, and kind of reset after next year. But is there a plan in place? And I haven't heard anything locally about this to, you know, make another investment in the roster this offseason. Well, I think there's going to be an investment in the roster. I think, you know, target number one, as Tevin says in the chat, is Roki Sasaki. But now that's a completely different pool of money that you're pulling from, but you do have as good a chance to get Roki Sasaki as any other team in baseball. And, you know, we, we know that the work has been put in. We know that the work is continuing to be put in on Roki Sasaki. At Peter Seidler's memorial, A.J. Preller actually mentioned Roki Sasaki. Uh, that day, so I think that's probably target number one. Um, but again, as you said, that's a different pool. A that's different the international pool, pool of money. Yep. That's the groundwork you've laid with you, Darvish, his mentor, uh, being the most active GM on the you know Asian front and yep. in Japan as AJ Preller, his learning Japanese and continuing to practice it for all these years, trying to make him feel comfortable. Not just him, but any any potential acquisition. You know, Yuki Matsui, all of them. This is what A.J. Preller has done. This is why he works, you know, as hard as he works to try to give himself a chance at players like this. I would I would totally imagine that he is your your first target, number one, because he's really, really good. Number two, that he's very, very affordable for a while. And uh, that that's the guy that you go out and you get. And I think I don't want to – Blake Snell should never be looked at as some consolation prize because, again, different pools of money affects different things, certainly. But I do think Roki is target number. I'm to the point with Roki, I'll crowdsource a billboard. Like, we should do something like that, something big to get Roki Sasaki here. Not that they can't do that in L.A., uh, because I know that they want him very badly as well. Uh, he's got, they have Shohei Otani. They've got Yamamoto. They've got Yamamoto. Yep. They certainly, you would think the Padres and the Dodgers are the two favorites for Roki Sasaki's services in – Assuming he does come over this offseason, as has been speculated. But I also imagine that teams like the Yankees will make a tremendous push for Roki Sasaki. He is a, but they can't offer more than correct. the other teams yeah, can. They it, all can offer right around the same. It, he's a phenom, you know, so to speak. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But, yeah, man, it's a little bit early. And I do think I, – I don't, I don't think that I think it really depends on how the rest of this season plays out. I don't. I don't think if the Padres, you know, go out and win the World Series this year that they say, all right, let's time. Now it's time to, you know, not continue to to go for it. Or even if they make the World Series or something like that, I think they're going to continue to. If AJ Preller is the GM and, and president of Baseball Ops for a long time, as he as he probably should be right now, yeah, I think this is. I mean, 
he's not going to do anything differently. You know, he's still going to try to win baseball games. That's what he loves to do. Of course. Yeah. Now, the other Heyman report that involves a free agent to be this offseason in the San Diego Padres was one that I saw a lot of Padres fans upset about, and that was his uh, column on the odds of each team to sign Juan Soto in the offseason. And and the his main point is that the Yankees are probably pretty heavy favorites, like at least even money, he thinks, followed by teams, the Mets and the Dodgers and the Giants were his top four. But he included the Padres at the back end. He did his top ten, and he had the Padres at number ten. And the comment that he made got a lot of Padres fans upset. He said, had their beloved owner Peter Seidler lived, they'd be much higher than 100 to 1 and 10th on the list. It's very, it was, it's, I didn't have an issue with him putting the Padres 10th. I think people thought that I did. I, I never had an issue with... I don't think they're higher than 10th. I don't, I don't think they are either, and nor do I think that they're even going to really pursue Juan Soto. I was surprised they were even in the top I, 10. I, yeah, I, don't, I, I think... I really think, as much as I liked Juan Soto, I, I think that ship has has sailed. I do. Yeah, I, your chance. I, yeah. I, I I do somewhat agree that you know if, if everything if Peter Seidler was still here and everything was going, he might have an inkling that he wants to get Juan Soto back he, after trading he him might away. Have never traded. I don't and think he, he yeah, ever left. Yeah. And he may have never left. So in that sense, what John Heyman is saying has a a kernel there to it. Sure. People were just up. Upset was, was just how he said it, I think, I and the think phrasing it, it, of it. It was the phrasing. That's all that got me as I went. That's a weird way to put it. It's just a weird way to, to – you're a writer. It's a weird way to put it. Uh, invoking the name of Peter Seidler like that I thought was a little odd. Crass? Well, it, it's that... not – it's just weird. It's just weird. That's the best way I can describe it. It's just weird. It was very strange. But, no, I, I do not expect the Padres to be players for Juan Soto this offseason. No. And it's fine. They got value for him, big time value in Michael King, in Kyle Higashioka, and Randy Vasquez, and Johnny Brito, and in in my in Drew Thorpe, who yeah. they who they helped flip to turn into Dylan Cease. I mean, really, without those guys, you're not sitting here no. 16 games above 500 and fighting for an NL West title. I mean, at this point, it looks like a total total masterclass by AJ Preller that trade.